welcome everybody to this launch of the new BAFA and CPAF research mentoring scheme. I'm delighted to welcome many of the mentees and the mentors and also other interested parties who are members of BAFA. I'm going to introduce Hilary and ask her then to make her presentation. And then at the end, there'll be an opportunity for people to ask questions, either of Hilary about her presentation or questions to myself about the scheme. So we will have a combined Q&A um, at the end of the event. The event itself uh, is probably only, only going to be an hour um, unless the Q&A goes on. Um, so just to let you know that um, we're aiming to finish by midday. And if you want to ask a question, can I ask you if you can either type it into the chat room or put your hand up in the chat room. There's a little um, icon that you can use to put your hand up. Um, or if I could actually see you, if you've got your um, video on, you might even be able to put your hand up in <laughs> Uh, at the screen for me, but I'll, I'll um, see how many people I can see later. Um, it's probably best to use the chat room. Okay, so I'll introduce Hilary. First of all, those of you who were at the BAFA Awards ceremony um, almost two weeks ago um, would have heard me introduce Hilary before, um, but as there's people in attendance today who weren't at that event, uh, I'll make a short introduction. So, Hilary Lindsay has made the transition from being an accountant to being an academic, and she has championed the cause of academics within the profession and vice versa. So she won the Distinguished Contribution Award um, for her leadership of ICAW, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, of which she was president in 2016-17. Also, she's introduced an open access website, the ICAW Academia and Education Community, of which she's the inaugural chair. But she's going to speak to us today on her researching accountant development framework, which is one of two frameworks that she developed through her doctorate in education at the Open University, which she gained in 2013. So I'm very pleased to welcome Hilary and ask her to share her screen and her presentation. Thanks very much, Hilary. Can you all see that okay? Excellent. So I'm delighted to be here at the, the launch of this scheme. I think it's just such an exciting idea. And you'll see from my research that mentoring is a really important uh, um, part of developing as a researcher. So I want to talk about three things. It leads on to the, the framework that Elaine was mentioning, but I just need to take you through the journey so you understand the um, thinking and the research behind the framework that I'll be sharing with you. So I'll talk about my initial research for my doctorate, then about very briefly about uh, a framework that's being used at the Open University, and then I'll feature on the researching accountant development framework, which is a framework to help fledgling accountants, early career researchers develop um, those capabilities. So I'm hoping it's going to be particularly relevant to people in this context. So I started off doing my research uh, when IFAC, the Global Accountancy Body, decided it wanted all accountancy bodies to introduce compulsory CPD. Uh, and it also talked about lifelong learning. And I started off and did my master's actually, trying to find out what informal learning was and what formal learning was, because um, ICAW happened to introduce an output-based scheme for its CPD. Uh, and having discovered that in a way, this is just a, it's not two different things, it's all a continuum. I then went on to start my doctoral studies where I was very much trying to find out what CPD and what's lifelong learning because the um, statement required you to foster a commitment to lifelong learning. So were they separate? 
was one part of the other? Which way round was it? Did they overlap? So these were the questions I was trying to explore. And in doing that, I had to find out, go back to learning itself and do a lot of research around learning. And I discovered that there was a, a, a big body of opinion that recognized there were three different ways you could learn. You can learn by um, developing your knowledge and skills, cognitive, which is very much what um, people always used to think learning was about. You can learn in an intrapersonal way by internalizing what you're hearing and then changing and responding to that. Or you can learn in an interpersonal way, which is by learning from other people and also from the environment in which you're um, belonging. And the house, since I did my doctorate, there has been some global research about what are the skills needed for the 21st century. And they actually came up with the same three areas, cognitive, intrapersonal, and interpersonal. And what's mapped onto this diagram of those three dimensions is what's happened with learning in the professional bodies. And so we started off with continuing professional education, which happened to you, and very much was about sitting in a classroom and being told what you needed to know about particular topics. And then at the turn of the century, there was a move towards calling that CPD. So the D being about development and it much more being about the learner taking responsibility for their learning. And it also being very much about learning at work, not just learning in a, in a separate room away from work, if you like. And then there's been this move in the language to lifelong learning. And if you look at the literature, you'll find there are lots of similarities between CPD and lifelong learning. You'll find they're both very much about the learner taking responsibility. They're both very much about um, learning as a process that happens whilst you're carrying out your job. Um, but the difference in the literature is that lifelong learning has it an ex in it an extra element that's about continually changing. It's about being reflexive. It's about um, responding to what's happening. Um, and so I found that there'd been a move through the accountancy profession that actually reflected a move in the dimensions because the literature also shows that cognitive is no longer enough. It's always going to be important, but the two extra dimensions are particularly important. And so what I was able to do quite simply was to draw, divide up this um, chart into nine triangles and put into them the sorts of learning that might happen in each area. And I'm not saying you can divide up learning, all learning is holistic, but I'm saying that there are nine emphases that you can think about to make sure you're not missing out on any aspects of learning. And so at the top, you've got the informed professional, which very much reflects um, the whole CPE world that there used to be the last century, um, very much about the technical knowledge that you need. You've got the information, but then can you use it at work? And this is when it brings you down to the next level um, where you're learning on the job, you're learning from other people, which brings in the competent professional. And if you're competent, then the regulators will be happy, your employers will be happy, you're a safe pair of hands to do the job. But for me, there was this bottom layer, the lifelong learning layer, which is very much about you as an individual taking responsibility for what you're doing and making sure um, that you're responding to what's happening so that you're adapting all the time. And so you'll see I'm saying that's the complete professional because you're making sure you're not stuck in a rut, you are responding. Uh, and I've distinguished on the left hand side of this slide between learning relating to professional competence and learning relating to career adaptability. And career adaptability has got five bits in it going across from the intrapersonal side. It's got self-belief. It's got having a positive attitude. And then the th the next three are all about because you've got those first two attributes, you're able to experiment, you're able to explore, see what's happening out there, and you're able to engage. Um, and you can also very much um, look at these areas and the top two, if you like, are very much about your identity 
And then as you move down the list, you're moving towards the whole concept of agency, about you taking responsibility in your particular context. So this was the framework that I came up with for my doctoral thesis. And, and after that, I was talking to a mentor, my own mentor at the Open University about my research. And she was saying, well, we sort of reached a conclusion that these were nine spaces for learning. I happened to have done research that had populated them with ICAW Chartered Accountants views on learning, but in fact, you've got nine spaces for learning. And um, I did a professional doctorate, a doctorate in education, which is very much about researching into your own professional experience. And so my mentor was intrigued by the brown triangle in the, meaning, in the middle, which is about learning at work. And she was saying, could you develop something similar for professional doctorate researchers to help them make that transition um, and, and, and help them develop their skills so they could carry out or achieve their doctorate. So, and the other piece that we wanted to do at the Open University was we knew that PhD students had got the whole VTI um, professional development framework that they could use, but we were wanting to have something that was suitable for people that were involved in this particular type of doctorate. So did research with um, students at the Open University and some graduates all on the education um, doctorate program, um, found out what their views were about their learning experiences during their um, studies. And then from that, pulled together a rather different looking framework. So this framework turned into a circle the Open University doesn't like hierarchies, it doesn't like bright red at the top, so we've ended up with a, a more subtle donut or bagel here. But you've still got the three areas here. You've got working as a researcher, which is very much about developing the knowledge and skills that you need. You've then got developing ways of thinking around the right hand side, which is very much about how you're changing as a person. And then you've got moving on with your research, which is very much about how you can um, then make a difference with um, the research that you have been doing. And this has become a resource on the Open University website. Um, and behind each of these areas, which were just the words that came out of the thematic analysis, so no preconceived ideas here. This was the result of upwards analysis of what people were saying. Um, out of that came, came a resource where you can click on any of these areas and behind that area you'll find quite a few quotes from people about that area, suggestions, tips, hints, what worked for them. So you've got an example here of a, you can't read it, but in the area of building supportive relationships you've got um, some quotes about what people said and then points for you to consider. And then the other bit of the resource is that there is then a development plan that you can complete. So this is just a Word document. So you can go through what people are saying and you can, you can decide what you might want to be doing as you do your studies in these areas. And um, we had a successful pilot at the Open University. There have been two journal articles published about the development and then the running of the resource. And it's now being used across all the doctoral programs at the Open University. And it's been integrated actually into the studies so that when um, doctoral researchers send in assignments, um, which is the way the professional doctorate program works, alongside that, they need to have been thinking about the framework and making sure that they're thinking not just about their knowledge and skills, but about how they're changing as they do their research and what they may be able to do about sharing their research either now or in the future. And the link at the bottom of this page, and Elaine's got the slides so she can certainly share them afterwards, is a link to OpenLearn, which is an open resource um, of open university material that, that anybody can access. You can go onto that link and you can see this particular framework. So that's part two of the frameworks, if you like, but just moving on to part three, there was then this question, I'd moved into academia as a qualified accountant and I wanted to um, develop my research skills and I knew it was quite a long journey to do that. And so I was thinking, well, is there another framework that we could develop 
again by doing um, interviews with both new and experienced researchers and gathering in quotes, could we actually um, develop and then populate another resource that would help people in that context? And so that's what we have with um, the next and final framework that's of particular interest to you, which is about the re researching accountant development framework. So again, it's nine areas. Um, again, looking at the three different emphases, cognitive, intrapersonal and interpersonal. Um, come up with slightly different titles for them. I called the first one developing your knowledge and skills because that was very straightforward. But the other two, I'd come across a quote from Aldous Huxley, who'd said that, um, and this is something that when you start doing doctoral studies, people very often say to you, don't try and change the world. <laughs> And what Huxley was saying was that um, you can't change the world. The only thing you can change is yourself. And I reckon that by calling my second area changing yourself, by changing yourself um, as much as you can, if you like, that can help you change your particular, the particular part of the world that you're involved with. So that's why I chose these particular titles. And so all I want to do now is just to take you through the, the three chunks, if you like, on this framework, um, give you a few quotes for each, but also then emphasize some of the points that I think might be particularly relevant um, today when we're looking at celebrating the start of a mentoring scheme. So the first area, we've got three areas in it, um, understanding research, engaging with other people, and bringing research to practice. So very much trying to make those links. And if we look at some particular quotes, I mean, again, these headings in here are the result of the thematic analysis. And these were the words that best described the quotes, what people said under the areas. And so I did an awful lot of moving around of what people were saying to group them together to work out how do these all fit together into, into a coherent whole. Um, and so that's what you have here. And if we look at just a few quotes that people said in this particular area about research, there's no right answer, research is gray. And then very much this is something from somebody who's moved across from the profession into academia the parameters are different, it's a different game, and it's about learning the rules of that game. And then, very nice to see, it says, if you can identify a good mentor, that's probably a good thing. So there you are, that's the uh, mandate for today. And just looking at that engaging with others piece in the middle, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the, the areas that we've teased out within that. So around enlisting support, people were saying building your own support structure is important, pointing out that it's in the interests of senior academics to actually help you develop, because if you're a more competent researcher, you'll be able to add to the value of the department. Um, commenting that working with a colleague can help both of you. So it's all this importance about working with other people. Around having a mentor, people were saying, very helpful. The mentor may be um, from a different faculty, or you might need different mentors for different aspects of your career and research, which I thought was an interesting point coming through in the context of today, where we're bringing in an extra um, mentor, if you like, from outside your core organization. And another tip that came through was it's good to be proactive in seeking a mentor. Well, we've got an opportunity here where you're being offered one. So that's fantastic, really. But you had to fill in the application form. So that's a step in the right direction. And then talking to colleagues, it's just emphasizing when you start doing research, how important it is to talk about it. Try and find people that are going through a similar experience to you um, and talking both formally and informally um, and making sure you're beginning to build your own networks particularly within the institution where you're working. So that's the first area of the framework. And then coming around to the second area, uh, which is about changing yourself, where we've got three more areas, thinking things through, 
and in particular thinking about what qualifications you might need if you want to develop your career. How you may be affected, so quite a lot of issues around confidence. If you look at the resource at the, the quotes in this area, you'll find there's quite a lot of angst there from people trying to work out how they fit in when they, if they've particularly if they've moved across mid-career. And then at the bottom, developing resilience, um, learning to cope with feedback, which you've all had to do, but also managing your time and your workload. So finding time for research. And I'll come back to that again in a minute. But first, just some quotes from changing yourself. I think it's hard because you feel like it's a totally different space. So this is back to the whole idea of identity and trying to work out who you are and how do you fit into this new world that you're involved in. Um, then the second one, I've never felt so unsure of myself and so lacking in confidence. So that's, again, emphasising the the new world and the having to start from scratch in many respects in a, in a new place. And then the third point we'll all recognize, one thing I didn't appreciate I would take so personally was the critique. And of course, this is particularly challenging if you're um, doing doctoral research because uh, it's a bit hard to be dispassionate about the things that you feel passionate about. So it's quite hard to separate yourself from the feedback and recognize that the feedback is on the work rather than on the um, on you as a person. And then just within that area, just a few more comments, particularly about the developing resilience. So the coping with feedback, um, people were recognizing that you've got to make that separation between the feedback and you, but some people found that easier than others. Um, also recognize that constructive criticism will certainly lead to a better piece of work, but you've got to get, you've got to be able to work with the criticism. And sometimes people found it hard to understand what the criticism was trying to get at. So there were communication issues. Um, and then finding time for research and study. I mean, this can be so hard. It's, I mean, even if you've got time allocated to research or to scholarship, it's a matter of then probably having to commit some of your own time to it, particularly if you're pursuing a qualification. Um, and trying very much to ring fence any work that's allocated to research. But the trouble is we're all dedicated teachers and we don't want to neglect our students. So really hard to be selfish, but you really have to be selfish to succeed in this space. And then about managing your workload. It's partly about um, trying to think ahead. If you want to start doing research, it was suggested to me that it's it's not a very good idea to take on a role leading a department if you're wanting to develop your research profile, particularly if you're wanting to do a doctorate. So it's about trying to look at how can you balance your own responsibilities to make enough space to do research. Uh, and also what people found disconcerting when they came across to academia was that they were very much used to being told what to do. Um, whereas um, in you move out over to academia and people say, well, there you are, get on with it. Or well, there's more of that, certainly, which gives you the freedom to do what you want to do. But then you've got to work out how do you manage your time? So I think managing your workload can be particularly difficult. And then just the third area. Um, on changing your world, we've got this moving across the bottom part of the framework to being interpersonal. So about being proactive, about developing your networks, about making a difference. Um, so some quotes here, emphasizing the importance of conferences and networking, not just speaking, um, recognizing that conferences can be terrifying most terrifying things I ever did. This is a professor in accounting saying this. And then the excitement of finding out something new in the third quote. And then just having another little look at developing your networks, as that's the area that's most akin to, to mentoring. Talking about attending conferences and recognizing that at first you might just attend, but it might be that a colleague is presenting and you could perhaps help take questions on their paper. So you gradually try and give yourself a bit more profile. Um, 
recognizing that if other people are researching in a similar area, they'll be very keen to talk to you. And you don't always find that everybody's very keen to talk to you about your research. So you um, sometimes want to, um, uh, well, it's good to find people that, that are. And then the whole question about publishing your research, about finding the right journal, what could be the topic? How do you turn a thesis into articles? These are all really difficult topics, but there are some good quotes on there with suggestions for help. And recognizing that the journal article, publishing an article will take time. And recognizing that everybody, whatever their title, whether it's professor or whatever, will have had articles rejected at some point in time. I think once you realize that, this helps an awful lot. So those are just a few quotes. But then where can you find this, uh, this resource? It's on the ICAW website. And there's a link there. But also, if you Google academia and education community, you should be able to find it. You can join the community. It's once you've joined the community, which is free of charge, then you can access the, the, the resource that's on there. So this is what it looks like on the website. It's a bit more pretty than my version. Um, and then what you'll find on the website, you've got nine areas. So each of these areas you can then click on. You see it says read more before, below the area. And that's where you get to all the quotes that people have been saying. But also in doing that, you can then think about particular points. And this is something that you don't have to do all of it all at once. This is something you can dip into whenever you want to. Um, but with all these things, whenever you're doing learning, you're trying to do learning in order to make a difference. And so what you can also do is download a document here from the website um, so you can make your own notes and hints about things that you think you might want to do in that particular area. So the resource, a resource there that's been developed from talking to qualified accountants who've moved across into academia about how to develop their research capabilities. So I'm hoping that all of you on the mentoring program will find this a useful resource that you can dip into and use along the way. A couple of pages of references, um, just to show that I've uh, been able to encourage other people to publish the work that I've been doing and that I feel confident in sharing it with you. A um, bit more information there, a website there from me if you want to get in touch. And then I would be delighted to take any questions or comments. But as Elaine said, we want to talk about the mentoring scheme, not just about this particular framework. So I'll stop researching at this, uh, stop sharing at this point. Thank you very much, Hilary. Um, I could invite people to unmute and give a round of applause at this point. Thank you very much. Lovely. OK, so can I now um, ask you perhaps to, to mute again um, and start off with asking some questions. I'm going to suggest that you ask it first questions of Hillary, anything about her presentation you'd like to know more about. Um, and then I'm going to ask if you're a mentee, if you ask your questions and then finally the mentors. So we've got three sets of, of Q&A to fit in the time we've got left. So I'm just going to look at the chat now. And I've got, uh, I've got thanks, but so far no question, but um, can I encourage people to, you don't need to write the full question if you just want to put into the chat, I have a question and then I can invite you to ask it. While people are thinking about it, um, perhaps I'll just um, add my own, <laughs> emphasis to the presentation that Hillary has given because I think that the emphasis here is on three of those nine elements that are really relevant to the mentoring scheme so I think the engaging with others engaging with your mentor but also asking perhaps your mentor to recommend new um, networks and conferences and other people to engage with and then under the changing yourself, I think developing resilience, I think Hilary has stressed that one about coping with feedback and, and so on, that really is important and your mentor can help you with that. And then finally, in the changing your world, developing your networks, attending conferences, getting your own research out there. 
um, to start your publishing career. So there's three really important, whether you're, whether you're looking at the triangles or the boxes, three really important elements that relate to mentoring. Okay, questions please. Okay, Hilary's got a comment first, so go ahead, Hilary. I think that's the other Hilary. Oh, is it? Ah, ah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> okay. it's, very, it's very rare that there's two Hillary's in the room. So. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'd just like to say thank you so much for that presentation. That was brilliant. And I, too, am an accountant, qualified, worked in industry, moved into academia. And I wish I knew this when I was doing my PhD. Um, it's, it really has brought home lots of key points that I found going along. And it's nice to know that I'm not the only one out there. So thank you. Really enjoyed that. Thanks. And that's that's Hilary Coyle. I should perhaps ask people to say who they are before they ask that question. But um, yes, one of one of our early career researcher mentees. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Joan, you have a question. Yes, please. Yes, Hil Hilary, thank you so much. That was really brilliant. I just I wondered, Hilary, is there a kind of an element of um, snobbery in academia that um, between you know the people who are currently doing research and who kind of know what they're doing and then people who are coming in from the profession you know do you know what I'm saying almost like a us and them and that kind of is a huge barrier and because I, I I think quite often people get into research quite by chance it's it's not really part of any deliberate kind of rational somebody taking them by the wing or you know somebody taking them and mentoring them which is where this program comes in and I think it should be more of that support but I wondered is there an element of snobbery? I'm, I'm, whether you call it snobbery whatever you call it I'm, I'm sure there is and where it's particularly hard is when people come across mid-career and they've had a, a, a a really successful career in a completely different world and then they arrive in academia and people in academia are thinking who are these people <laughs> we've been in academia we know how we're supposed to be doing things so so where have they come from and the people that arrive are thinking well I thought I was quite senior before and now I'm not so I don't think it's so much snobbery but there's some really good quotes in the in the resource about this and um one person in particular is saying, well, actually, the accountants that come across could do a lot worse than to talk to the established researchers and take an interest in what they're doing. So rather than the camps just going into two different places, actually take an interest, and come along to any webinars that there are where people are talking about their research so that you actually develop links and more understanding of each other. I mean, it's about it's about getting to breaking down the barriers. So you're right. I mean, an us and them is another phrase that people will talk about. Um, and there's also an issue around what do universities value? And if the ref trumps the TEF, then or before there was ever a TEF, then research then becomes the the important currency. But now we've got the TEF and now we've got scholarship coming through as an important thing. I think there's more opportunity for conversations, but it's, it's, not, it's not just snobbery by the existing people. It's about the newcomers need to respect the genre when they come across. I'm afraid that's one of my favorite phrases of all time. Um, and they need to, um, take time to find out what's going on and recognize that these people in a very, very different world to what they're used to are doing a fantastic job and they know so much and can help these new people so much. But good point. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm just looking. I don't think I can see any more questions in the chat room at the moment. Um... Don't be shy if you're if you're a new mentee, don't be shy in asking a question. Right, okay. Shall I go again then, Elaine? All right. Um, I was just, I was just going to say, um, really good point. Of I'm at um, University of Derby, which has a massive focus on TEF, not REF. Um, it's moving now, but it, it, we are, we all come in as teachers. 
So my department of accounting were pretty much all qualified accountants coming in. And I was the first one to get a PhD. I was supervised by marketing um, reader, reader in marketing. And so who do I go to talk to about accounting research? So th that's why this mentoring program is fabulous because it's completely opened my eyes to a new set of possibilities. Um, so for me, this is really, really important. So thank you. Good. Thanks, Hilary. And I'm, I'm delighted to say that through this scheme, um, that Hilary's actually got an excellent mentor in Lawrence Ferry. So um, I hope that goes really well for you. He's absolutely yeah. fabulous. We've already had our first meeting and he's brilliant. So really right. good. Thank you so I much. I don't for think that. he's with us today, so I can't actually thank him, but um, <laughs> okay. Um, Joan, you've got a question. Yeah, I was just going to say, Hilary, um, the second Hilary there. Uh, th there are Hillary, there are a number of the account, this the special interest groups from Baffy. You know, there, there's, there's actually, if, if there's a huge community of researchers out there, absolutely huge, different groups you can join. I'm involved in the accounting education and the CDAF group, and you know, there, there's lots of support, Hillary. Uh, you know, just nice people wanting to help everybody. You know what I'm, that kind of thing, Hillary. So I think there uh, there are avenues out there, and it's a matter of maybe asking. I think it goes back to what Hillary's saying. You know, reaching out and going beyond your institution, maybe even Hillary, and and eking out people that are maybe in your area and connecting with them and asking them, well you know, where is the best place to go? What are the best conferences or workshops or whatever it is? How can I get involved with the community, the community being BAFA? Because there, there's a tremendous amount of ways that anyone here in the room can get involved. And, and for career development, I think as well, these are the sorts of things that you need to be thinking about. I mean, maybe Tevin might want to say something about that. Well, I, I think, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, George. No, it, it, I, I, was, I was reflecting on my own kind of, uh, listening to Hillary, uh, second Hillary, uh, about about the um, uh, you know the, the starting point and, and and the fact that you know I also struggle you know kind of having a very narrow perhaps sometimes looking at the research in a very kind of you know too close to it and and in fact it's it's through meeting um, uh, others and, and and talking more generally and networking with others that suddenly that I have a I have a we find a broader set of ideas uh, 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 to approach it so. And, and also, I think one interesting point I wanted to say is that often uh, you mentioned uh, Hillary, uh, first Hillary mentioned uh, uh, the, the sort of switch from, from practitioner to, you know, to researcher. Uh, but the other interesting thing, considering that some of us here are from different countries, is also an academic or practitioner from a different country or uh, moving to a UK setting. So, you know, researchers and researchers also do not have necessarily same expectations or same same ideas about how uh, to work together, how to to, you know, to to consider publications. So so I think that's why again I think uh, as as John has already made the, the kind of point about BAFA, you know, in the sense of trying to find a, a common ground for people to understand, okay, what what sort of, of expectations do we have? So uh, the, the similar issues I think practitioner to researcher. I think you could also see from from researchers from because I think we can see the researchers from different countries, Europe. Uh, Asia and whatever, who may who may also uh, I think benefit a lot from from this idea of networking and 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 and, and the, the points you made. Thanks, Tevin. And and while you're while you're there with us as well, I just want to say a thank you to Tevin that not only has he supported this new scheme as president of BEFA, but also as a volunteer mentor himself. So I'm very grateful to you for supporting the scheme in more than one way. Um, I'd also like to echo what, what Joan has said and what you've reinforced there, that BAFA has itself the special interest groups and um, lots of people who can help. And that's also a doorway to other networks. And I know that for Hillary, I think that's already worked because um, her um, allocated mentor, Lawrence Ferry, is giving a plenary at next week's conference of MARG, which is the Management Accounting Research Group. And although that um, is not part of BAFA. It, it, its conference is hosted um, in conjunction with the Management Control Association, which is, um, if you like, the recognised um, 
<laughs> partner with partner, Pepper, yeah. <laughs> um, for various events. So we, we get involved in the management accounting research stream of the Beffer conference, for example. Um, so, so we do have um, other networks and subject associations that your, your mentor may be part of. So it will open doors for you to join other networks. So I uh, hope to see you again next week at the Marg conference. Thanks. Now I notice um, somebody's raised their hands and I think it's- uh, Yeah, I, I, it's probably Stuart. I was going to say some, <laughs> yeah. something, but you, I'm sure Stuart is thinking exactly the same. So go okay. ahead. Go ahead, Stuart. All right, thanks, Elaine. I, I'm not sure Chief and I am thinking the same as you, but the, we'll, we'll see what comes out. Um, and thanks very much, uh, Hilary Lindsay. The, the, it was an excellent presentation. Apologies for being late. I was actually doing a practice viva for one of my PhD students who's got her, her viva tomorrow. Um, I was just wanted to pick up on uh, what second Hilary said, and it is very weird, the parallels here, because I too was in a, uh, a, a predominantly teaching department in a post 92 institution. I uh, eventually did my P got my PhD, although I changed jobs during the course of uh, the studies. But I was also supervised by somebody from marketing because there just wasn't the capacity in the department I was, uh, I was in to do, uh, um, to have anybody from the, uh, the accounting department do it. Um, I suppose my, my kind of experience on that to feed into it was just to, to give yourself time uh, to, there is a huge amount, there is, and particularly for those of you maybe who are, are going to go into uh, institutions that it, where REF is uh, and the institutions are research focused, there is going to be pressure that's going to be put on in terms of publications and so on. Uh, but it does, to, to do good quality research does take time. Um, now, if you're in maybe at the University of Derby, maybe the circumstances are that you can kind of go under the radar a little bit on the research side. But you've got to, to echo what Hillary was saying, you've got to manage the workload because you're not going to be getting the research allowance that you do get in the, the research intensive institutions. But it does, you know, it does take time and there is going to be knockbacks. Uh, you know, everybody has had rejections. Uh, I went through a period of nearly three years of getting papers rejected and then got three of them accepted within six months. That's the kind of thing that happens. And so you end up with this very lumpy kind of uh, CV at times. But yeah, that's the only thing I, 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 I would say in terms of particularly coming from maybe a post 92, moving into a more research uh, uh, intensive focus. It, it, the, the battle is going to be around the time and managing the time and giving yourself time and space to, to develop the ideas. And Lawrence is a fantastic guy as well he's going he's going to be brilliant so I, I i do some work on public sector accounting as well so i i know some of that group very well lawrence is going to be a fantastic mentor for you and and thanks again elaine for the initiative and and getting all this off the ground thanks Jet. that actually reminds me of, of one of my own mentors um not an official mentor because we didn't have an official mentoring scheme but um but i was mentored in terms of management control by david otley and I can remember looking up to him for all the many publications he'd had and then hearing him present something at a management control workshop where he'd had the paper rejected and wasn't sure where to send it next. And I thought, well, if it happens to him, then yes, it can happen to anybody. Um, but sharing stories about those experiences and, and how to pick yourself up and how to um, either target another journal or if you're lucky enough to have a, a revise and resubmit how to uh, approach that is very much part of what we hope the mentoring scheme will deliver. Thank you. Do we have any more questions either for Hilary or myself or even for Tevin on the, the BAFA scheme? Yeah, if you, whilst, whilst maybe anyone wants thinking, just, just to also add my thanks to Erlen, I think the energy you've put into it is, 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 is remarkable. Uh, the, the amount of time, it was very quick and, you know, uh, and it's, it's good to, to see this. And, and there's a second batch, you know, there's, 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 <laughs> there's a second. Uh, Absolutely, yes. There's a series yes. two, there's a season have, two. So. We have people waiting to join cohort two already. Um, yeah. And I have noted who's here today and one or two people who are in the Zoom room today um, who are obviously interested but haven't yet um, uh, been asked to mentor anybody. I, I shall um, keep your name yeah. <laughs> on my little uh, list, as they say, for the next cohort. 
perhaps my second quick point was just to say, I mean, the reason I was trying to think is, is also from this process, also, if we know what else can we do, I mean, in a sense of what, you know, mentoring one-on-one, -on -one, I think is, is really the top, you know, really good support and, and perfect. But mm. perhaps certain common things may come up from it, you know, around around publication, around yeah. dealing with R and R's, around you know things that perhaps we we could take up as an extra session yeah. or uh, development session, meeting editors, you know, that that, that sort of That's thing. That's great, thanks. Yeah. Because I think there were one or two things when when we conducted the survey and when we also had the notes from the um, early career researcher group um, that that met. Um, there were one or two things where we felt that possibly a workshop or a session at the conference might actually be something that would also be useful. So um, either mentees, if you um, identify a need that you don't think is being covered by the mentoring scheme that, um, or something that you think um, that you're not the only one who would appreciate. Yes, you can send my, your ideas either to myself or to Tevin. Um, ideas for workshops that Beffa might be able to um, put on in the future or elements for the conference. So yes, all the feedback is, is gratefully received. And we are going to do some formal feedback. We'd like to do some feedback on a, a short evaluation at the end of this first year. So we will be asking both mentees and mentors for their, um, their feedback on the experience um, towards the end of the first year. Um, so, so yes, there will be another another survey and another opportunity to participate. Um, but just looking at the the um, what, the kind words that Stephen said um, for me about getting something done, um, it reflects my own background. Was when I did my professional doctorate, I used action research. It's really hard to get it published, but <laughs> action research is because you want to make an impact while you're doing it. You don't want to wait until after you've published it and after you've presented it. <laughs> okay, anybody else got any other um, questions at all? Uh, yes, Jim. Oh, action research, yes. I think that's just a comment. Uh, contact the first one too. Great. Okay, so thanks. Thanks to uh, Professor Steely for participating in the scheme. I can't see any more questions in the chat room. I'm just going to check, I'll open a different list, just open the participant list and see if anybody's got their hand up. Uh, Okay, I don't think so. So what I'll do then um, is say thank you again to Hilary for her great presentation. And she has agreed to share her slides. So we'll have a recording of today's session and the slides available um, on the BAFA website. Um, we may even be able to email out um, a copy of the presentation to the mentees and the mentors, including those who are unable to join us today. But I'd just like to, um, it looks like there might be something else in the chat. Let me go back to there. Uh, and just a reminder, yes, from Tevin to invite everybody to submit a paper for the next annual conference. Thank you, Tevin. Um, and basically, thank you everybody for supporting this event today and for supporting the new mentoring scheme. I wish you all success and I look forward to getting some feedback in due course. So. Thank you. And I think that's probably um, it for today's session. And yes, if you'd like to, again, unmute, we can thank Hilary again. Thank you. Cheers, Hilary. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Hilary. And we should thank Elaine. <laughs> thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.